Yes, capture your events, weddings, your fairs, dance, church events, seminars, parties, photographs. Phone numbers to reach 571-991-1321 or 908-906-4830. Or Deneho TV, we love you.
change for uh, the repast for tomorrow. So uh, the repast will not be in here, it will be in Ghana way. And after the service, immediately we will go to St. Demetrius. Uh, we thank you all for all the people coming here. And without my in-law, I would not be in this country. Uh, I, if I say that I will start talking about him, uh, we will not finish because of the time. When I was coming here in 2001, there was my in-law who he paid my ticket for me to come to this country. I stayed with him uh, for almost two years before I moved to Ohio. I thank God for his life and all the people are running, including Mr. and Mrs. Sashifi, with the help of them that make who we are today. So we thank everybody for this service and everybody who knows my in-law that he's a man of peace and he loves everybody. And his legacy, even though he's dead, the family and all of us will continue. We thank you. Let us now gather our thoughts together as we go to the throne of grace in prayer. Let not your heart be troubled. Know that it is God alone who is taking care of you and who will nourish you and care for you. Let us clear our minds and hearts of all things except going to the God in prayer. Let us pray. Holy God, Lord of life and death, you made us in your image and hold us in your care. We thank you for your servant Seth, for the gift of his life, and for the love and mercy he received from you and gave to us. Especially we praise you for your love in Jesus Christ, who died and rose from the grave to free us from evil and to give us life eternal. Grant that when our time on earth is ended, we may be united with all the saints in the joys of your eternal home. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. We know that you are the Holy One for all the mercies, one who cares for all of your people with an everlasting love. You are the God of all comfort who consoles those that are suffering in the, in the death of this loved one. You are the God of all peace, who has promised to pour your holy and perfect peace unto the hearts of your children who are grieving through the pain and suffering following the death of sin. God, I pray that you would become our strength at this time of loss, our hope in this time of we need you to be our joy in this time of sorrow and our perfect peace in the turmoil that our hearts are facing. Thank you that the sting of death has been broken, broken forever, and the curse of the grave has been destroyed through the death and resurrection of your Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Speak into the hearts of all you that are mourning at this time, and let us not mourn as one without hope. Lord, we also pray for those who do not know you as Seth We pray that they will come to know you, that they too may be welcomed until your heavenly host. We pray that you be especially close to the family and give them the assurance of the Comforter and the Prince of Peace is here, and that they need only to call upon his name. Lord, we thank you for these cherished memories. 
We ask, as has been said, that we remember that Seth was a man of service and a man of peace. May those two characteristics be one that we carry forth to honor his name. Lord, we pray that the light of your love will be poured into our hurting hearts and that as time passes, we can once again smile with the joy that comes from remembering his jokes and remembering all that he did for us as he loved to be the light of the party. May that be our memory of him. All of these things we pray in your name. Amen. Amen. We have another music select musical selection. journey of life.
cause us to be still for a while. Lord, make us listen. Thank you for your presence with us. For you'll never leave us nor forsake us. In life and in death, you will be with us. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. been understood by different cultures, different epochs, and different contexts in varied ways. For some persons, life is seen as dramatization, and for that reason, we have sayings like, the world is a stage, and we are like actors that come to the stage to act. In dramatization or in acting, there's often the beginning of the drama and the end of the drama. For some, life has been viewed as a story. And as a person is born, the person leaves and the person dies, the falling of the story begins from birth. It continues in course of the stages of life, and in the end, it is rounded off by this story fading away in death. Life is also seen as a journey that is begun from the birth of a child, and there are various phases of that life until the journey proceeds beyond this world to the world of the unknown. It is interesting that whereas there are individuals who believe that Christianity has nothing to do with being an African, it's a white man's religion, and for that reason, Christianity is a tool used by the white man to be able to control the black man or the black woman, or in other words, a conjecture of the white race, which is used for the purpose of domination over the black race. And that is why in the context like South Africa, the story is told about how the white man came and he said, let us pray. When the people closed their eyes to pray, the white man praying had the Bible in his hands, and the African man and woman had his land, the piece of land. And when he said, let us pray, at the point of the conclusion of the prayers, and the amen was said, an exchange had taken place. The Bible was in the hands of the African man, and the piece of land was in the hands of the white man. Do Africans have a reason to be suspicious and sometimes indifferent of the Christian faith? I would argue that there are ample reasons that could give impetus to the indifference of the African because in the reality of the African, there have been episodes, there have been experiences that are too real to be quickly forgotten. But still I will argue that a measure of Christianity that was brought to Africa was not a holistic Christianity. It must have been a romanticized kind of Christianity for the purpose of people coming into a space which for them was an exploration. It was an experience to explore other worlds 
to see what this was for for them for the purpose of economic reasons and perhaps for exotic reasons. I am joining the Christian faith. I was born and bred an African child. A second generation Christian from my father's side and a third generation Christian from my mother's side. My father that was was begotten by a man that did not know Jesus. He was a traditionalist and a traditional healer. My father encountered Jesus in the course of his life. And he bore me as a child raised in the Christian faith. As one that has lived his life in Africa and in various parts of the world. As one that has grown as an ordinary Christian, just being religious, because I was born in a religion to a Christian family, and as one that has experienced the new birth in Christ Jesus. I have encountered education as a Christian, but as an African, exploring literature, looking at the various scholastic positions of what life, what death, what reality and what imagination is. I am of a good age at this time, a good exposure, soci sociologically speaking, and a good exposure in learning to draw a balance in all the conjectures, the suspicions, and all of that exists about Christianity, African traditional religion, and other forms of expressions of religious life. What is life? I would argue as an African that life is a journey. And as a Christian, I will also show biblical evidence that life is a journey in the biblical understanding of what life is. It's interesting that you could draw a similitude, a close reference between the understanding of life as Africans and the understanding of life as Christians. The closeness of that understanding strikes a chord which calls our attention to admire the fact that God in his wisdom may have revealed himself in the incarnation of Jesus who may or may not have been a white man, but God's economy was all embracing. He bore me in mind as an African, and bore all of you in mind as Africans. I speak to an African audience, and I'm excited to draw these balances, and these similitudes, and these interests from these two perspectives. Why do Africans view life and death both as a journey and a continuation of their journey to the world beyond? And yes, I will want to recall to your memories those of you in the diaspora that may have been away from the continent of Africa for a long time, you can never forget these stories and these things that we In many African cultures, when funerals are carried out, if you go to the graveyard, you see people keeping cups and plates and spoons and various kinds of things. As a matter of fact, as a part of the funeral rite, in the days of old in Africa, the slaves of the king or of a prominent man in the community were buried with the man. Sometimes the wives were also buried with him. Unfortunately, when the woman was buried, they never buried men with her. <laughs> because life was to continue beyond the grave. And they needed to eat food, needed to be attended to, needed to continue living. So women, unfortunately, it didn't work for women.
the song that was rendered before the beginning of this message by Audrey Assad, lit candlelight and meet the settling gloom, lit down me on. It's rooted in Christian theology, which points out to the fact that life is a journey. The journey began from God, and the journey will end in our return to God. The African funeral always had the hard point of the, 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 the African man or woman buried to join the ancestors. So it was a committal for the continuity, for the journey of the ancestors. And most often at the funeral rites, we say good night. We look forward to joining you in the present time. Friends, we are gathered in the church, not in an African shrine. So what does the Bible say? In Philippians chapter 1, Verse 21, the Bible says, But the revelation of God through the lips of his servant, St. Paul, for to me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. For me to live is Christ, to die is gain. And that from there, my theme is drawn for this message today as a funeral eulogy for our beloved brother, assassin. Dying is gay when living is Christ. How then did the apostle Paul see life? He saw life as a journey. But in addition to life being a journey, he saw life as a business transaction. For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. That's a businessman's understanding. It's a matter of profit and loss. Look at Pauline theology, he says, I suffer the loss of everything for the excellency of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. I counted all things as loss for knowing Jesus. When you talk about profit and loss, it's gain and loss. That is for my understanding of what life is. So the understanding of a Christianity that in prayer transmits the Bible to some other person and takes a piece of man is not a theological Deliberately rooted understanding of Christianity. Christianity is about a profitable living, a living which enriches your life, a living that does not impoverish you, a living that does not enslave you. It's a living that makes life meaningful, makes life interesting, it makes life very, very exciting. Little wonder that our brother, as I said, was a man that enjoyed life. He wanted a good life. He made them want to laugh. He took life easy as much as he could. He may not have been a perfect man. No one is ever called to be perfect. But what God calls us to be is to be our best. Above all, it is to be exactly in the words of what St. Paul said. For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. What is the theological understanding of dying is gain when living is Christ? It is that we are called to live as an embodiment of Jesus Christ. This is now a very serious point of this message. Because this message at this point has nothing to do with our beloved brother lying in state here. It has to do with us sitting here. What 
energizes your living? What informs your living? What stands before you in the mirror that you view life? The lenses that you wear, what do you see about life? Your philosophy of life, what informs it? It's a big mistake for anyone that feels that a devoted Christian life is only lived by those that are failures in life. The ignorant, paupers, the wretched of the earth. Paul was a sound, well-educated human being. He was a man that understood the business of entrepreneurship. He was a man that did not take anything as surface value, steep in great philosophy and deep in devotion as a Jewish man. He was a man that was acquainted with the world of his time that was sophisticated. This was the man God chose to reveal to us the mystery of living and the mystery of dying. For me to live is Christ means that before Paul lived a life that was entirely wrapped in Christ Jesus, Christ stood as the epitome of life, of what made life meaningful, what he aspired to be in life. He had education in his mind. He had entrepreneurship in his hands. He had the best of the walls available to him. For he was a Jew and a Roman citizen at the same time. This message is important for persons who have come from Africa to be in the US and to become American citizens. It is for people who are permanent residents in the United States of America. People who are living the American dream or who the American dream has become elusive. They want to grab it, it keeps eluding them. They keep wishing for a better tomorrow which has never come to them. They pride themselves on an American citizen. They have gained the accent of Americans. They have carried the worldview of Americans. And they have put aside everything that is meaningful about Africa. They do not want to set their feet on the shores of Africa. What informs your living? Yourself, your pride, your education, your beauty, your wealth. What is it that is the epitome of your life? What drains your energy? What keeps you awake? What excites you? Why do you live every day? What do you look forward to the next day to be meaningful to you or to be empty for you? Paul said, for me to live is Christ. In other words, he says, if anybody wants to see Jesus that cannot be seen in human eyes anymore, when you see me, you will be seeing Jesus. When you hear me speak, you'll be hearing Jesus speak. Paul undertook to become a replacement of Jesus on earth. He said, I will fight the battle of the faith. I will reflect the love of Christ. I will unravel the mysteries of the Godhead. I will show the bounty of the power, the grace, the mercy, the favor, the blessings of God. Paul was not a kind of Christian that saw the standard of Christ as too high for him to meet. He strove every day. As an athlete, as a servant, as a worker, and above all, as a slave of Jesus. That every word from his mouth was meaningful for the glory of Jesus. That as he slept and woke up, Jesus was the reason for which he lived. That as a tent maker, when he built his tent, he thought about Jesus. The way he walked with his family and did everything in his life, he thought about a more meaningful life. We are told as responsible citizens, and men 
women that want to do good, that want to live for their ideals that are higher than just the benefits of usury, of the creation of wealth, and of just having posh cars and mansions to live. People that want to make meaning in humanity. To live for something that is greater than you. Something that is worth your effort. Something that is what you're dying for. Something that is greater than what you can imagine of yourself. I want you today to begin to see life from a new perspective. I want you to put the right lenses through which you can see life in a more meaningful way. If you are a Christian, and what they call the name a Christian. You should understand that you represent a kingdom. And that kingdom has a master, has a king. His name is Jesus. You are to be the replica of Jesus in your thoughts, in your actions, in everything concerning you. That was what Paul meant by saying, for me to live is Christ. Dying is gain when living is Christ because when a life is meaningfully lived and in the context of our passage and biblical theology, meaningful living is to live as a servant of God. Not necessarily be a minister of the gospel on full, in full-time service, but that in every engagement of life, you reflect the life of Jesus in the marketplace, in the educational institution, in the hospital where you walk, or wherever you find yourself. But also, in the fact that you come from a family, as a father, as a husband, as a brother, as a child, as a member of the community, that your life reflects responsibly love building up others living in harmony enjoying life not at the detriment of other persons but in the community of other persons the african context of community which is called ubuntu which in in strict sense of it it has to do with living in harmony with one another Living not as individualism in Western civilization, but living as a community of God's people, of a people that belong to each other, as kids and kin. Today we weep for the departure of our beloved brother, friend, son, daughter, member, but we draw from what contributions he, have, he may have made in life in respect of living in the community and making his contribution as much as he could. <clears throat> Your journey in life is headed to a destination. Will that destination be for a warm welcome of the master? Will it be a transition to the other world to continue living a meaningful life, a life of joy and of peace? Or is it a journey that will end in oblivion, in grief, in pain, in sorrow, in frustration? We are to profit in the life after here because we have invested in the life here in our living to represent Christ as servants of Christ. While we are away in the flesh, we look forward to our return to the author of life and to give an account of the journey that we undertook, of the talents given to us and the investments that we made. Our investments with profit in terms of gain or our investments in losses in terms of not living meaningfully 
and not living for the purpose for which we were created. Let us pray. I wanted to spend a few seconds reflecting on your life. How well are you faring in this journey of life? How well is the business of life going on? the investments God has made in your life? Do you foresee a profit, a gain, or losses? How well is the journey? Have you forgotten that you are in a journey? Are you now having a stroll or having a walk? But the day is coming. That the journey will come to an end. Will you be welcome home with the master's joy and excitement? And so it becoming a day of job? Or will you return home disappointing the purpose for which you undertook the journey? Child of God, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His mind. When you have forgotten the parts of your journey, return to the place. Walk in faith. Walk with courage. Walk looking forward. So you return to the master. Beloved friend. If you never thought about your life as a journey which will come to an end, I want you today to understand that no matter how young or no matter how old, the journey will come to an end someday. Walk therefore from today with wisdom. Seek to know Jesus as Lord and Savior. God everlasting King. Behold the creation of your hands. We convey and worship in your presence. Receive the word of truth, reminding us of life being a journey, life being a transaction, and the fact that we are to bring gains unto your presence. And we are to end the journey well. Grant us grace. Grant us your mercy. We thank you because of answer. In the name of our Lord Jesus. Amen.
into your hands, O merciful Savior. We commend your servant, set of for Acknowledge, we humbly pray, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive him into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in life. The God of peace, who brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, make you complete in everything good, so that you may do God's will, walking amongst you that which is pleasing in God's sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Dear friends, we are drawing this service to a close now. And on behalf of the Reverend Dennis Kennedy and myself, we understand that some of you may still want to view the body, but that will be out of the practice of worshiping. The time was allotted from 5 p.m. to 7 for persons to view. And we had a funeral some, some weeks that passed. The problem with a structure is that once you begin to default it and go back and forth, you begin to create problems. And for the purpose of the honor that deserves to be accorded at birth, it's important that we go through the processes giving glory to God. <laughs>
said I am the resurrection and the life says the Lord those who believe in me even though they die will live and everyone who lives and believes in me will never die do not be afraid I am the first and the last and the living one I was dead and behold I am alive forever and ever because I leave you also will leave let us pray Almighty God, I set apart this space where the body of your beloved child is going to be laid to rest. I consecrate this grave to be a secure place for the resting of this body in hope of the resurrection from the dead in the fullness of time. So I dedicate this grave in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. My soul has found a resting place Not in device, nor creed I trust the ever-living one His wounds for me shall I need no argument, I need no argument, it is enough that Jesus died, and that he died for In sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life, through our Lord Jesus Christ, we commend to Almighty God, our brother, Asase, in hope of a certain resurrection from the dead. Gracious Father, grant that your name may be glorified, now and hereafter, and we commit his body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, and dust to dust. 
Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord, says the Spirit. They rest from their labors. Let us pray. The Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in heaven, as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. The blessings of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and ever. Amen. Amen.
and that's so bad that God is no more. Yeah, I want you, my brother. If you had a chance to buy, hey, I did them one. I have a son to your floor. Yeah, buy a worry, and maybe I see more. It was a young boy, big boy. Oh, my area, that is a sweet. I want you, my brother. Yeah, I want you, my brother. I want you, my brother. And then so better for As I walk through the shadow of the valley of death, I am not alone. I see a light. It shines bright. I am going to see my king. I am going to see my God. Hallelujah. I am going to see my king.